Sarah. Thank you guys so much for joining us this morning at Clearview Church Online. Well, hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in today. Come on, let's worship together. We sing it out. You have come. You have come and we have found life everlasting. Now alive to know your freedom, never ending. You alone have made a way for us in your love. You are life from living in the light of my Savior. Dancing. You give love. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we can just get into your presence this morning. God, I pray right now over each and every house, over each and every room, Lord, that we will have worshiped, we would have set our hearts' affections and our minds' attention on you. God, that we would take everything that we are facing in these days, in this season, 
Lord, and, and that we would just hand them over to you, that we place them at the foot of the cross, God, and all the pressures that's built up over all of these new normals that we've been functioning and operating in. And uh, God, I just pray right now over our people, Lord, that you would touch them in their homes right now, that you would provide strength for them right now, that you provide encouragement, Lord, that you would lift the atmosphere of their home, that as they're tuned into this service and as they've just worshiped, Lord, your name above every other name, God, and as we prepare to get into your word, Lord, that you would anoint my lips to flow freely the word that you have prepared in me to share with our church and our community, God. So we thank you, we love you, and we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning for church. Uh, we are going to be doing a, a sermon this morning, if you're taking notes, called Under Pressure, Hold the Standard. How many of you feel the pressure that we have going on right now? Right? Everything's different. Everything's changed. If I'm going to be completely transparent with you, which I will, uh, our household is under pressure. We've got a four-year-old and a seven-year-old who have been locked up. The only way they get out of the house is if we're going to run to the store and then they stay in the van. Um, and uh, it's just to get them out and into a car, right? Who would have thought that one of the greatest joys my four-year-old and seven-year-old would ever have in a season of their life and their childhood would be, yes, we get to go for a ride in the van. I mean, it's kind of been a little bit crazy. I think it's been crazy for all of us, no matter uh, what season of life you're in. But this season with the coronavirus and the stay-at-home order, uh, there's been a lot of pressures, I think, that have built up in, in all of us. And, and it looks different for each and every one of us. Um, for some of us that are our parents of kids that are school age, we're dealing with the pressure of trying to figure out how to teach our kids log into all of these websites so that they can have access uh, to their education. If you're a teacher, you have the pressure. It doesn't matter how many years you've been doing it, of figuring out how to teach your kids virtually. Um, if you are still on the front lines and you are part of an essential business, uh, you are dealing with going in and interacting with people and are at risk. And, and I just want to let you know that we're praying over you. But that even builds up pressure in the home as well as at work. And so uh, everybody's feeling pressure on different angles, whether it be financially, physically, emotionally, spiritually. And, and I just want to encourage you that when you're under pressure, hold the standard. No matter what the pressure is, hold the standard. That's what we're going to get into this morning. If you have your Bibles or, or you're going to be uh, using a device to access Scripture, I want to encourage you, we'll be in Daniel chapter 3, so you can start turning there now. But there's two things I want to talk about when it comes to pressure. I've got an awesome tube of toothpaste right here. Isn't that awesome? I've got a few people here. Don't worry, we're not breaking the 10-person rule. Okay, but, but I've got this awesome tube of toothpaste. And, and the box tells me that it's Crest Complete Plus, okay? This is not an advertisement, all right? Extra whitening with tartar protection and white smile uh, is in one tube. Clean mint is, is the flavor. But how many of you know that this box can't clean my teeth? It's, it's great, it's advertising, but it's telling me what is inside of it. Well, that brings us to the tube. And the tube looks just like the box. It's Crest Extra Whitening with Tartar Protection, and it's for a whiter smile. But how many of you know that this tube can't clean my teeth? It can't fulfill its purpose. Only what's inside of it can fulfill the purpose. The box couldn't fulfill the purpose that it was stated. What's stated on the tube can't fulfill the purpose. But what can fulfill the purpose is what's inside the toothpaste tube, which is toothpaste. The only way to get this toothpaste out, right? even right now, it can't fulfill the purpose. The only way to get toothpaste out of a toothpaste tube is to apply pressure. And when you apply pressure, what is inside of it comes out. So the first thing that we're going to look at when it talks about being under pressure and us holding the standard is that pressure reveals what is on the inside. So we're not getting into the debate, the household debate. Do you, do you, do you roll it from the end or do you squeeze it from the middle? Okay, that's not what we're getting into right now. All right, so uh, set your, your marriage difference aside on who uses the toothpaste and how we squeeze it. All right, but at the end of the day, right now, what we see is that pressure reveals what's on the inside. So that toothpaste now has come out and we can see that inside this tube, 
was what said on the outside, toothpaste. All right. The second thing that pressure reveals, right? Pressure reveals first and foremost what is on the inside. The second thing that we learn about pressure is our outward, this is our outward response, and it comes from our internal investment. I cannot pour out of me what I have not put into me. If I have not filled up with the right things, I'm not gonna pour out the right things. And in the different roles and responsibilities that I have in my life, I need to make sure that I'm filling myself with the right things so that I can pour the right things out. So if I want to be a life-giving person in my home, I need to invest into myself life-giving things. So I need to get into the Word of God that's living and active that can speak to me. I need to get into the presence of God that brings the peace in the middle of chaos. I need to get into worship and, and celebrate who God is, right? We talked about this uh, for one of our Wednesday night prayers, ACT, Adoration, Confession, Thanks. I need to adore God for who he is, not what he's done for me, because if my relationship with God is solely about what he's done for me and not about who he is, it doesn't reveal to me and it doesn't allow me to say, I love you, Lord, because you're good. I love you because you're faithful. I love you because you're with me. Not anything that he's done for me, because when he's holding back something that I feel like I need, right? We talked about this with Jesus being the good shepherd. The good shepherd provides exactly what we need when we need it. If I lack something, it's not because he didn't provide it. It's because I don't need it. But what happens when we're under pressure, and I've got these three containers right here, and I'm filled up right now with living water. Okay, I've spent my time in the Word. I've spent... Well, what good is doing the Word if, I, if I'm going to be teaching my kid? Well, let me help you. If you're going to be teaching your kid, you're probably going to need some patience. Your heart and your heart's affection needs to be focused on the Lord and your mind's attention needs to be focused on the Lord. So while you are outwardly helping your children with something, that the overflow of the Word of God, loving, compassion, right, that the fruit of the Spirit overflow into your actions so that the things that you're dealing with and the things that you're battling, and the pressures that are on you, that's what's overflowing into those situations. So if I can't, I can't outwardly respond with what I have not internally invested, which I want you to evaluate, what are the things you've internally invested? Have you saturated yourself with news and media and uh, social media? that says it's the truth, but nine times out of 10 isn't, what are the things that you're saturating your life with? What are the things that you're filling up on? Because what you fill up on is what you're gonna pour out. And so I wanna encourage all of us today that if we wanna pour out the right things when we're under pressure and reveal what's on the inside, we need to fill up on the right things. We need to fill up on God's word. We need to fill up on his presence. We need to fill up, and we, here's the thing though, when these pressures hit and these things that we have to do, what's going to happen is we're going to pour ourselves out into them. You see that? We're going to pour ourselves out. Now, look, I'm empty now. They're not full. They're not taken fully care of. So what do I have to do? I've got to, I've got to go back and fill myself up. It's not something that happens once. I've got to get myself full again. I've got to go back to the Word. It has to be a constant. This isn't something where it's like, Oh man, I, I did my Sunday service, I tuned in. Look, I'm proud of you for doing that. I'm glad you're connected. Look, like the comments, make a comment, connect with us, let us know that you're here. But let me help you. This moment isn't the moment that's gonna carry you through the rest of the week. What's gonna carry you through the rest of the week is waking up tomorrow and opening God's word and reading it for yourself. I can't do that for you. What's gonna help you through the rest of your week is waking up tomorrow and, and opening up Spotify or YouTube and putting on some worship and listening to worship and getting your mind and your heart focused on the things of God before you get into your days and before you start into your pressures. What's going to help you through the rest of the week is when you wake up on Tuesday, when you wake up on Wednesday, when you wake up on Thursday, that you go back to get filled up so that you can pour out and so that those things that you're feeling pressure on, because again, I'm sure some of us have more than three pressures. Can I get an amen? amen? So some of us have more than three pressures and we're sitting there, but if we don't fill ourselves up, we won't have the chance 
to be able to take care of the pressures the way that we are and then we're empty and we can't handle any more pressure and what happens when we can't handle any more pressure is we break. So the things we want to learn about pressure is pressure reveals what's on the inside and then what's on the inside becomes our outward response and it comes from our internal investment. So I want to challenge you before we get into the Word of God today is to think about what are the things that I'm pouring into me and what are the things that are coming out of me? Because what's coming out of you cannot, cannot be there if you have not invested it into you. So what are the things where you're putting your time, your effort, your focus, your attention, your affection? What are the things that you are investing into your life right now, into your soul right now? What are the things that are going to change in this season that you're going to carry forward? Because I'm going to be honest with you, I don't want to go back to the way things were before, back to normal, if you will. But I hope that this experience, just like any other experience in life before a pandemic that shuts us down and puts us at stay at home, my hope is that every day I live, that I change a little bit for the glory of God. I hope that I grow with Him. I hope that my walk with Him becomes stronger. And the only way for that to happen is I got to keep going back and getting filled up. I got to keep going back and getting filled up. And I'm going to encourage you with this. I know that my illustration just a minute ago was so that we can go and get filled up. So when you wake up in the morning, get in the Word. When you wake up, uh, get into His presence. When you wake up. But you know what? Sometimes those pressures suck you dry by noon and you need to get back into His presence. And can I just encourage all of us today that prayer doesn't have to happen at breakfast, lunch, and dinner as much as it needs to happen constantly. Because the consistency of you talking with the Lord is the consistency of Him pouring back into you. And when you do that, you're filling yourself up with Him so that when the pressure squeezes you, He gets revealed and He gets glorified through your response. So we're going to get into Daniel chapter 3 right now. So if you have your Bibles, if, you, if you've already prepared to get into this, under pressure, hold the standard. Now, Daniel chapter 3 with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and King Nebuchadnezzar, uh, it, it is one where these three Hebrew men, and they would have been probably about 13 years old, but considered men in the Jewish tradition. Um, these three Hebrew men were found in the king's court, and, and they were invited, and they were placed in a place of prominence within Babylon, and they had favor with the king. But something happens. The king builds a statue. And so what we're going to see as we read through Daniel chapter 3 is that the king throws a party, the king then gets angry. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego respond to the king's anger. The king follows through on his decree. The king then stands in amazement. And at the end of it, we see that the king repents and glory comes to God because when pressure hit Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they got squeezed with pressure, they held up the standard. So I want to encourage you that under the pressures that we live in right now, and even after this is all gone, anytime that you're facing a pressure in life, I want to encourage you to hold up the standard. Everybody say, hold up the standard. Hold up the standard. Come on, we can do it a little better. Say, hold up the standard. Hold up the standard. All right, so Daniel chapter 3, we're actually going to get started in uh, verse 4. The, the first three verses basically lay out that King Nebuchadnezzar built a statue that's 90 feet tall out of gold for everybody to worship. And he's gathering all of the people, all the influential people, all the officers from all the different provinces and all the languages to come. And when music plays, they're to bow down. So here's where we're at in verse 4. And we've got a lot of reading to do, so just read along with me and, uh, and shout it out. So here we go. Then the herald loudly proclaimed... This is what you're commanded to do, O peoples, nations, men of every language. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and all kinds of music, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship immediately will be thrown into the blazing furnace. I love that they make the stipulation. It has to be immediately. Therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, and all kinds of music, all of the peoples, nations, 
and men of every language fell down and worshipped the image of God that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Verse 8 says this, At this time the astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said to King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. They were just a bunch of kiss-ups. You have issued a decree, O king, that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and all of the kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold. And that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into a blazing furnace. But there are some Jews whom you have set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who pay no attention to you. O king, they neither serve your gods nor worship the image of gold you have set up. Furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar. Everybody say Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar. He summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king, and Nebuchadnezzar said to them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods and worship the image of gold I have set up? Now, when you hear the sound, so King Nebuchadnezzar really likes these guys. So he's even going to give them a second chance. The decree that the herald says is if they don't bow down and worship him immediately, they're going to get thrown in the fire. But you can see that Nebuchadnezzar favors them because he's going to give them a second chance. Well, maybe they just didn't hear correctly. Maybe, maybe they just didn't listen right. You ever have that moment with, with uh, something in life? Maybe the pressure, maybe, maybe it's just the Lord, right? And you're just like, I, I just need a second chance. Well, King Nebuchadnezzar has favor over these three Jewish boys and, and he gives them a chance and he says, now, now when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harps, the pipes and all kinds of music, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, very good. But if you do not worship it, you'll be thrown immediately into the blazing furnace that would then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand. So the king has already put himself above the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This is where the king gets angry. So we see the king throws a party, the king gets angry. Well, here's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's response. And I'm going to be honest, under this kind of pressure, I don't know what would have come out of me in a response. But I love with hindsight in 2020 that we get to see, we get to see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's response. They reply to the king, right? The king who has given them favor, who has put them over Babylon. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't need to defend ourselves to you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But here's, here's the part. Here's the faith part. Here's... Here's the squeeze. Here's the toothpaste. Here is the, the water that flows into the pressure that we just saw a minute ago. Here is the moment that, that encourages me and strengthens my faith every day and challenges me to be more like these three Hebrew men. But even if he does not, we want you to know, King, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. The boldness and faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego says, you know what? We're not worried about that. Because God will deliver us. Because he is with us. And you know what? Even if he doesn't, it's okay. It's okay. Because we're still not going to bow down. We're still not going to take a knee and bow down to your statue. We don't have to defend ourselves in this. It's not our problem. Right here, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they show what's on the inside. They show that they know that the Lord is God, that Jehovah is God. They know that he is their provider, that he is their protector. He, they know, they adore God in this moment for who he is and who he's been and know that God is consistent and faithful. And so their response to him very boldly, but even if he does not, we want you to know, O King, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image that you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar got furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And his attitude towards them changed. It went from favor to, I'm going to kill them as brutally as I can. He ordered the furnace heated up seven times hotter 
than usual and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in his armies to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into the blazing furnace. Now, what was the original punishment? The original punishment was that anybody who would not bow down would just get thrown into the furnace. Well, King Nebuchadnezzar ups the game. He takes his strongest men to tie them up. So now they're bound and restricted. And isn't that the enemy's game in our life? As he tries to bind and restrict us with lies, with thoughts, with opinions. He tries to take what God has put in us and the God that we know and have experienced and he tries to create lies to steal, kill, and destroy whatever he's put in us. And what do we learn about pressure? Pressure reveals what's on the inside. So what we need to do is in those moments is be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and trust him because here the king, Nebuchadnezzar, he ups the game. He says, I'm going to get my strongest men. They're going to tie you up. We're going to not just throw you in the furnace, but we're going to heat it up seven times. You should be incinerated before you get inside the threshold, right? We're going to heat up seven times hotter than it has been. And just to, just to exclaim the heat, Daniel writes here, so these men, wearing robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent, right? So the king isn't responding, he's reacting. How I many of there's a difference between response and react? Right? Both of them reveal what's on the inside. One takes time to filter through some things. The king's reaction was so urgent that his decree was so urgent that the furnace was so hot that the flames of the fire killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. So we see there that their response leads them to get thrown into a furnace where the king increases his anger. But then, here's the pivotal point. Then King Nebuchadnezzar, in amazement, leaped up to his feet and asked his advisors, weren't there only three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, O king. I don't think they were looking at what he was looking at. Certainly, O king. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound, unharmed, and the fourth looks like the son of the gods, which we know to be the son of God. Nebuchadnezzar then approached the opening of the blazing furnace, and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out. Everybody say, come out. Come out. Oh, we can shout it now. Come out. Come out. Come here. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the royal advisors, the crowned, uh, they crowded around them. They, did, they obviously didn't practice social distancing in this moment. And so all of them crowded around him, They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor was their hair on their head singed. Their robes were not scorched, and there, there was no smell of fire on them. Now, I don't know about you, but definitely in this season where we're stuck at home, our kids have wanted to go out and do, do campfires. And, and I've got a special hoodie for campfires, because what happens to that sweatshirt that I wear by the campfire? What, what happens? It smells, like it smells like smoke. It smells like fire. Right? It smells like smoke, which is the evidence of fire. But what we're reading here is that, let's recap, they were tied and bound. They were fully clothed. They were, the fire was heated up seven times hotter. They were thrown in. The guys who threw them in died from the heat. When King looked up, there were four men walking around, and one looked like the Son of God. So in amazement, he calls them out. Their clothes weren't damaged, their hair wasn't touched, and they didn't smell like smoke. Now, I don't know about you, but that's the kind of stuff I want inside of me. That faith that's built up where I know, and I'm okay with, if I get thrown into this fire, if I got to deal with this pressure, if I got to walk this line, if this is my burden to bear in life, that it doesn't matter and I don't have to answer to it in this matter because God is with me. And because God is with me, he's going to rescue me. And even if he doesn't rescue me, I'm not going to bow down to the pressure just because there's pressure on me. I'm going to hold up the standard. Where's that standard found? It's found in the word of God.
So the story continues with this. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and, and, and they checked them out, and they found it that they didn't smell, their clothes weren't burned, their hair, there's no harm to them. Then Nebuchadnezzar said this. Now think about this. We go from, you're going to defy me, you're not going to bow down to me, you're not going to worship me, you're not going to worship the gold that I created or my gods. But get this. You ready for this? In verse 28, ever say verse 28. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except their own god. And if you're reading along with me, you'll see that Nebuchadnezzar's words change from a lowercase g to a capital G because he's recognizing God as the one true God in this moment. Therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces and their houses be burned into piles of rubble. For no other God can save in this way. The king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. So let's get this straight. Okay. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they have a place of prominence in rule over Babylon. They have favor with King Nebuchadnezzar. Somewhere along the line, King Nebuchadnezzar gets the idea to build a 90-foot golden statue. He decides to throw a party of everybody that he rules over that's in leadership to come together to bow down to a statue and worship his gods. And through that process, anybody who doesn't is supposed to get thrown into a furnace. And there are these three boys, right? The Bible first them men, but they're, they're three teenage boys. And, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego refused to do that. And so some of the people in the king's court come to the king and say, hey, there's these three, these three Hebrew boys that you like, that you put in prominence, you put them in Babylon. They're not, they're not bowing down and worshiping your statue. They don't worship your gods. That's not going to happen. And we see the process of pressure there. Right? There's a pressure that builds up around Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. There's a pressure that builds up around these boys who are going to have to face something that they didn't know they were going to face until the king calls for them. And the king looks at them and goes, well, maybe you didn't hear, right? The king's favor gave him a second chance to bow down. And how many of you know that the enemy of your soul is going to give you every opportunity you can to steal, kill, and destroy what God has put into your life? But what you put into your life is what flows out of your life. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who knew God, they didn't just know about God. There's a huge difference between knowing about God and knowing God. The outflow of the result of this story is, is, is that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego knew God. And because they knew God, they could face the king and say, we don't have to explain ourselves in this manner. We're not going to do it. But what we are going to do is we'll take the punishment. Because we know our God. And because we know our God, we know that there is nothing that can harm us. But even if he doesn't rescue us, we're going to hold the standard. We feel the pressure, right? I feel the pressure as your pastor and as a parent and as a husband and as, as a stay-at-home teacher for a certain degree. And Pastor Sarah is doing that as well. And, and so there's all kinds of pressures that are built in, financially providing for our families and, and our situations that are going around. How am I going to be able to make ends meet? There are all kinds of pressures built up right now that we're all feeling. But what I know is I know my God. What I know is that he's consistent. So I know that he's with me, even though the circum circumstances around me change. We got to see this. In, in Babylon, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had favor with King Nebuchadnezzar at the beginning of the story, God was with them. And then when King Nebuchadnezzar built the statue and called everybody to worship the statue and Nebuchadnezzar's God, God was with them. So when the king calls them forward, Guess what they know? God was, everybody say it, with them. And then after that moment, they look at him and say, we don't have to answer for this. You can put us in the furnace. You can do whatever you want to us because God's going to be with us. And even if he doesn't rescue us from it, we know that we held up our standard, that we did not bow down to graven images, that we did not worship any false gods, but that we lifted up the name of the one true God. That's what they're doing here. And so 
the anger comes in. And so what are the three things that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't do? The first one is they didn't give in. There was all kinds of pressure built up around them. And in that process of the pressure building up around them, think about the list of people that I read to you, the, the, the satraps, the, like, we can just go through that real quick. Think about all the people that I read here, the satraps, the prefects, the governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all other provincial officials. All right, every one of them is bowing down and worshiping. Think about the pressure. If everybody in your house stands up and starts to bow down, but you're the only one that stands up, it can be awkward, right? So they can feel the pressure of having to bow down to those around them, to the statue and worshiping the gods. They can feel the pressure, but what they didn't do is they didn't give in. They stood firm. And even when Nebuchadnezzar gave them the second chance, well, maybe you didn't hear it correctly, but here's what's going to happen. And he lists out all the instruments and he talks about all the music and he says, anytime, right? It wasn't like three times a day. Anytime the music plays, everybody within earshot of the music should bow down and worship the statue. They didn't give in. Their response is, we're not going to do it. We're not going to do it. We're not going to give in because we know who God is. Now, the second thing they did is they didn't give away. They didn't give away their standard. Mark, can you come on up here? Can we, can we give a big round of applause for Mark? Thanks, sir. Mark's, Mark's going Mark's to help us out with this, okay? They didn't give away. So what didn't they give away? They didn't give away their standard. The first thing they didn't do is they didn't give in to King Nebuchadnezzar. They didn't give in to the pressure of all the people who said that they were wrong for not worshiping uh, the statue. And then the second thing they did, they didn't do is they didn't give away the standard. So this ball right here is going to represent the standard that God sets for us. It's going to represent uh, the things of God, the, the ways that we should operate as children of God. And so Mark's going to hold this up nice and high. All right. You got to hold, oh, you got to hold up high. Here we go. Ooh, ooh. There we go. There we go. All right. Mark's going to hold it up nice and high. But in life, we know it, it's not as much our ability to hold up the pressure in the good times, although you're doing pretty good with that. Yeah, it feels good. All right, so, so Mark's holding it. He's holding up the standard. He's not going to give it away, right? But what happens, it's, real, it's, it's actually pretty easy to, to hold it up when, when, when you don't have pressure. Okay, but, but life adds pressure. So can I have you guys come on up and help me? All right, can we give it up for, for Sonia and for Sarah? Yeah, let's go. All right, I'm going to step back. But here's what happens if we don't hold the standard. You see, Mark's holding the standard and the red balls that they're holding represents the pressure that life throws at us. And what often happens when we try to operate and hold a standard when things are being thrown at us is we've got this human behavior to try and grab a hold of them. We try and catch them. We try and carry them. But the thing is, is that the only thing we're meant to carry is the standard of God. but we don't want to drop any balls. And so what happens is those pressures build up and they get thrown at us and we try and catch them. So go ahead, Mark, you're going to try and try and catch them, but hold the standard, hold the standard up. Come on, come on. Here we go. Here we go. You're, come on. All right, here we go. We're gonna put the pressure. Do it again. We, we, we need to, all right. See, so, so what, keep going. Go ahead. You guys can both throw. Yeah, you guys can both throw. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. So what we just saw there is that when we try to catch the pressures of life that we're not intended to catch or carry, we either lower the standard of God or we lose it altogether. So now let's look at what it looks like if Mark holds up the standard under pressure. Have fun, ladies. <laughs> And it, and it doesn't matter if the pressure misses us. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how many times the pressure hits us. 
What do you see happening when he maintains the standard of God in his life is the pressure hits us and it bounces off of us. He's not carrying it. He's not holding it. He's not lowering the standard of God. But what's happening is he has it raised up. He has it high and he has it. He, even though the pressures keep coming and missing some of them. Okay. Thank you very much. You guys can go have a seat. Let's hear it for our volunteers this morning. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't give in and they didn't give away. They didn't give in and they didn't give away. Just like there, you can see what happens when we give away the standard to the pressures that are around us and the things that are building up on us that God never intended us to carry or even try to catch. We wind up lowering the standard that God's put on us and the things that he's given us, right? If I go back to our Easter service and we talked about the good shepherd who, who provides, Jesus is my good shepherd, right? And the good shepherd makes sure, first and foremost, verse one, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. I lack nothing, I shall not be in want. If, if we truly believe that the Lord is our shepherd and we lack nothing, then the standard that we hold up is everything that we need and the things that are being thrown at us in life aren't things that we aren't meant to catch or carry unless they come from the Lord. And so what you saw there is as Mark held up the standard, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego held up the standard, all right, the pressures bounced off of them. What do you mean with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that the pressures bounced off them? Well, they chose not to give in, not to give in to the peer pressure, not to give in to the pressures that were built up around them to bow down and worship the statue, but they also didn't give away the standard. And what I mean by that is they didn't give away the standard in that those pressures, they bounced off of them. How do they bounce off of them? Because they looked at the king and said, we're not giving in. We'll go into the furnace and God will take care of it because we know our God. He will rescue us. And even if he doesn't, it is we are willing to die knowing that we honored God and we held the standard. And the third thing they didn't do is they didn't give up. How many of you know that there was plenty of time in that moment? Now, I know that the king's request is urgent. They, they turned the heat up. They weren't prepared to throw them in, but the king's request was urgent. But there's still time while they're getting tied up. There's still time while they're getting walked over to the first. There's still time... How many know it takes a little bit of time for a furnace to heat up seven times? So there, there's, a, there's a span of time there where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had the opportunity and had the ability to cave, to give in, to give way. But they never gave up. So they didn't give in, they didn't give away the standard, and they didn't give up. But what blows my mind and encourages my soul and strengthens me day after day after day as I read these stories in Scripture that, that share the truth of God's Word, and in this case, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego's story, is when we hold the standard, it's not that we did anything for the pressures of life to bounce off. It's that the pressures hit us, and they met in the reflection of the glory of God. Because Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't say, man, you can throw us in the furnace. We got this. Kind of had their swagger, swagger walk going on. No, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, we don't have to explain ourselves to you. Because we know that the God we worship will deliver us. And even if he doesn't, it's okay. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood in a boldness of faith. The pressure came in. And the internal investment came out. And so what we see here at the end is God's glory revealed, which is those, the, the balls that represent the pressure and Mark holding up the standard. When Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego held up the standard, not only did the pressure bounce off, but they didn't give up. They continued to hold the standard even in the furnace to the point where King Nebuchadnezzar goes from worship me, worship my gods, serve my gods, worship this statue to praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Everybody, everyone I brought here, 
to worship the golden statue. Every language that I've called to worship the golden statue when, when the music plays. We all need to worship the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So today we face pressures from all sides. So the first thing I want you to evaluate is what are the things that you're investing internally that are going to be revealed when those pressures hit? What are the things you're filling up on so that when you need to pour yourself out, it's making an investment and in filling up those other things? And how? What are the things that you're putting in place? What are the disciplines? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were disciplined. What are the things you're putting into life right now that are going to carry you through the pressures that are on you? What are the spiritual disciplines? What are the physical disciplines? What are the emotional disciplines, right? If our pressures are emotional, physical, or spiritual, we need to have disciplines in those areas of our life they're going to help structure us and strengthen us so that when the pressure squeezes us, healthy emotional response happens. Healthy physical response happens. A healthy spiritual response happens. And I'm going to tell you right now that that comes from getting into this word right here. It comes from getting into God's presence. It comes from worshiping Him in song. It comes from sitting quietly in a corner before you're family is awake or after they've gone to bed and just sitting in his presence say God just speak to me God I'm available to you because the things that we put into our life when the pressure hits are going to be the things that are revealed through our actions through our words through our thoughts so I want to encourage you to take time this week Evaluate the things that you're investing internally. And some of those things that are going to be evident of what you're investing internally is you're going to review your week of what you've outwardly expressed. But now is the time to make a pivot in life. Now is the time to recalibrate. Now is the time for us to set some standards that we can take from Scripture and hold them up and know that God is with us so that when the pressure of life hits, it's God's word that flows out. When fear hits, it's faith that comes out. When worry hits, it's worship that flows. It's in these moments that we have the opportunity to shift the dynamics of our life. And you know what? In this time frame where some of us are at home every day, it's real easy to not know what jeans are and wear sweatpants all day. It's real easy to not wake up before noon for some people. But can I encourage you not to feel convicted from those words unless the Holy Spirit needs to convict you in that. Um, but if you put disciplines into your path and you build a structure towards your life, emotionally you'll get healthy. Physically you'll get healthy. One of the studies that I read this week said that, that the onset of depression is happening in homes all across America because everybody's staying at home and they have forsaken having a routine or a schedule. And then because you don't have anything to get up for, well, you just mope around. And then when you get up, you feel worse. And when that compounds day to day, it becomes a depression. But I want to encourage you to put some structure into your day. I know several of you already are because we've had phone calls and I, I love hearing what your day looks like. But I want to encourage those of you who have allowed this time. Rest looks different for all of us, but can I encourage you to put some structure together? Create a plan for reading through God's Word. I know we've been reading through Proverbs. Some of you are finished. Some of you haven't finished. Some of you haven't started. <laughs> and that's okay. But, but create a plan. Create a structure for what you're investing into you so that when the pressures of life hits you, you can respond like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You can respond in faith that says, I know my God, and I don't have to worry about this. Because God's going to rescue me. And even if he doesn't, I'm okay with that. Because I know he's still with me. When you're under pressure, hold the standard. Let me pray over you this morning. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity 
to speak your word forward from Daniel chapter three. God, I pray right now over every, over every person in every home, every, every ear that has heard and every eye that has seen this message this morning, Father God, I pray right now over them. I pray your word has gone forward. I pray that they are encouraged and strengthened, Lord, to tackle the day that they are inspired by your word this morning to hold the standard, to not give in, to not give away the standard and to not give up, God, but that they would intimately know you, that they would get into your word, that Lord, that they would put a time of day that they can get into your presence and worship you to set their, their heart's affection and their mind's attention on you. Father God, I pray right now that the peace that passes all understanding would rule and reign in their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And Lord, we thank you so much that we get to be about building your kingdom in this season and out of this season. So God, I pray right now over your people, Lord, that they would have a blessed rest of their day a blessed week, God, and when they wake up tomorrow that they would get into your word, that they would get into your presence so that each day, Lord, that they can find themselves in a routine that honors you, that glorifies you, that reflects your glory so that when the pressure comes, they can hold the standard that you've set for us. We love you, we honor you, and we trust you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hey, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed that great word from Pastor Donovan about holding up the standard. I think it's important that as we continue to go about our weeks and the crisis and everything going on in the world, uh, we just remember that when we are under pressure, we should just hold God's standard. Uh, keep that in the forethought of our minds. Uh, pray everyone has a great week, and uh, we'll see you next week at Clearview Church Online.